Silent Night. Okay, so we've made it to the final movie of the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise as of 2020. Wow. All right, so let's get into it. It starts off in an abandoned house. There's a woman screaming. There's a man shaving in a disgusting sink. The man has luggages filled with Santa gear, and he gears up as Santa. Before we go on to the next part of somebody else screaming, I just have to say that I hated how this movie never stopped moving. There are maybe like one or two shots that have the camera still, but for like almost the entire movie, it's slightly moving just a little bit. And then the action scenes, it gets even crazier and it's distracting. But anyways, now there's a man screaming and he's in the basement of the abandoned house. The Santa Claus man goes down there and he has an axe. Like Billy had an axe from the first one. It's a nod to the first one. So the man screaming is tied up with Christmas lights and he's like apologizing for sleeping with a married woman because he thinks this Santa is her husband. So the man is pleading with the Santa to spare his life and the Santa doesn't say anything. And then he, the Santa electrocutes the man that's tied up in lights. Also when Santa electrocutes that guy, his eyeballs pop out, which is a nod to part two. We are then whisked away to the bedroom of deputy final girl and she she is getting a phone call from Malcolm McDowell because the guy who took her shift isn't going to be able to take her shift because he's out chasing meow. She's like, I took this day off because Christmas Eve is hard on me because this is going to be the first Christmas without Joe. Malcolm McDowell is just kind of like, yep, see you in couple hours. So she gets up, gets ready for work. She also does a crossword puzzle where she's trying to figure out a nine letter word that starts with S for a six-sided item. So she goes downstairs and it's revealed that she lives with her parents and her dad is like a Santa because this town has like the world's number one Santa parade in it or something like this. And that's gonna be this night, Christmas Eve night. Father also received a mysterious gift in the mail, which I think is a nod to the fifth film, but I'm, I can't confirm this because, spoiler alert, the presents don't kill anybody, but I feel like it's a nod. So then deputy final girl is, her name's Aubrey Bradmore, Bradmore. So she is on her way to work. And while she's on her way to work, she stops by the mayor's house. Cause he's like putting the lights out. I guess maybe she lives near him or whatever. And they have a little conversation about yada yada parade and blah, blah, blah. And his daughter Tiffany comes out in a sexy Santa suit. He's like upset that she's wearing that and asks her to change. And she's like, no and also throws mad shade on his, like, governmental choices. You might think it's cool for you and your important people to rot a road through protected land. I don't. So I like Tiffany. It's protected land, dickhead. Leave it alone. And then the next scene is just an over-the-top, terribly bratty teenage girl. And I hated this scene because it's just like, why? This really... Really? So anyway, she's obviously like an insane level of brat and also only 14 years old. So I mean, she could grow up. No, she can't because Santa comes and kills her. What the fuck? He like electrocutes her and then stabs her with a fire poker. Then to remind us what a good girl should be doing, the deputy is at church. I am not a big fan of deputy final girl. I think she's lame. I think she's lame. But anyways, so deputy final girl goes to church and the priest is super creepy and is like, hey, if you need anything because Joe's not with you anymore, like, let me know. Hey, kind of stuff. He also like reminisces about how, remember how people used to come to church? Yeah, they probably don't come to church anymore because you're a fucking creep, man. Then deputy final girl leaves and she goes to actual work now. The secretary, Brenda, and her are the only two that are in at the time. So they're chatting. Deputy Final Girl brings up the cross puzzle word thing again. And Brenda's like, oh, I'll Google it. And she's like, no, you can't Google it because that's not the point of crossword puzzles. Then Brenda starts gossiping about uh, Jordan, the detective, that, the deputy that was supposed to take uh, final girls shift and she's like I heard he's sleeping around with this married woman and the other deputy on the job I think his name is Giles he's late and he shows up and is like I'm late because I was picking you guys up a gift and he brought mistletoe with him and then sneezes on it because he's sick they get a call in about Santa making kids cry and the deputy that was late Giles or whatever makes a really weird fucking comment maybe he got a boner Kids are squirming in his lap all day. That's bound to happen sooner or later. And then Aubrey's like, Has anyone ever done a background check on you? And I'm like, 
I mean, you guys are both deputies. I hope you really don't have to ask that question, but at the same time, maybe they didn't. Aubrey goes to check it out because a uh, mean Santa is a police matter and not a matter of the parents don't bring them to that Santa and tell other parents. It's a small fucking town. There's probably like, what, I don't know, 500 people live there. So she gets there and there's a line of parents, even though this is a known issue and kids are leaving the line like that Santa's bullshit or some, or crying, you know, Literally doesn't make sense why there's a line, but whatever. So this Santa's name is Jim Epstein and is played by Donald Loge? Logue? However you say it. When I saw him, I was like, hey, he's the grounded for life guy. He's like a cynic, edgy Santa cosplayer, I guess, and is just not good for kids. And Aubrey keenly points out that- You're not from around here, are you? Yeah, Aubrey, there's like five cops in this town. You should know everybody. <laughs> like, what the fuck? So now we know for sure it's a very small town where people say shit like that. She asks for like his permit and whatever and he's like, you can't revoke my permit and she's like, well it's in accordance with not disturbing the peace or some whatever decency rule that they have. Then he asks her like, why isn't she home baking cookies with her husband? And before she can really react to that, she gets a call from Brenda and Brenda's like, hey, we need you to go check out an abandoned house because there's a bad smell. It's either a gas leak or a dead raccoon, which are two completely different smells, first of all. So confusing. Aubrey's like, can't Giles get it? And Brenda's like, well, he's a little busy right now. And then she makes this fucking joke. What, changing his maxi pad? What? What? Ha Good one. Because he's like a lady. So that's why he can't like do his cop job, I guess. Fucking idiot. But no, he's busy because the woman's husband who Deputy Jordan is probably screwing around with is missing and he's in to file a missing person's report. Good joke though. The next scene takes place in an old folks home which is a nod to the first Silent Night Deadly Night with the grandfather scene because it happens to this guy who is Tiffany's boyfriend. He also steals money from his grandfather and when the nurse comes in he's like oh my god he talked he hasn't talked in like a year he's catatonic and she's like okay, do you want to help? And he's like, no, I gotta go. So Aubrey goes to the house and doesn't announce herself and just walks right in and is looking around and eventually she goes down to the basement and finds Deputy Jordan. Yep, those two from the beginning are Deputy Jordan and the married woman who's sleeping with that I didn't write down her name because... I don't remember why I didn't, I just didn't. She calls it in, Brenda's like, oh my god, what the heck, uh, wait for backup, and Aubrey is like, no, we gotta make sure that other woman's okay if she's in danger or whatever. So she goes throughout the house and she's following the sound of a ringtone. She gets into an upstairs room, the same upstairs room that the tied up woman from the beginning was in, and she opens a drawer and in the drawer is the woman's hand holding the cell phone. And then the woman's torso is in the other side of the room, so it's a bloody mess in this room. And then Malcolm McDowell shows up and she <laughs> she turns around and like almost shoots him, but like he also didn't fucking announce himself, so if he did get shot, it would have been his own dumbass fault. He's also being like such a tough guy boss, like you're not fit for this kind of stuff, I'll deal with it, I told you to wait for me kind of stuff. Aubrey and Malcolm also talk back and forth as to who their suspects could be, and Malcolm's like, well, it can't be the husband because he is always just getting drunk and it's not him and she's like it has to be somebody who knew them like it can't be a random person because that doesn't make sense and then Malcolm McDowell says this line that I have to keep remembering. <laughs> yeah, a stranger just doesn't make any sense. Murder seldom does. Because we see some no reason kills in this one. Like, they did try to keep it with, like, he punishes the naughty, but then it has him chasing people and or killing people that haven't actually been naughty. So... The next scene is Tiffany and she's leaving a photo shoot that she just finished where she was presumably nude. There's another woman who's topless getting her pictures taken by Frank and Goldie. And Tiffany does a line of coke before picking up her paycheck and leaving. And when she's leaving... Leaving, she walks down the stairs and past the Santa and she calls him a creep because he is a creep. Santa goes to the door of the porn shoot and knocks on it. Goldie answers the door and gets scythed in the stomach because of course she does. And then the nude model sees what's going on and she's like, oh my god, Frank, and runs in the bathroom. Santa comes in and scythes Frank in the nuts that we see this shot like twice. I can't show it because I think it's against like what YouTube is cool with, but like we get the same like him dying scene twice, which is weird. The nude model runs into the bathroom and shuts the door and is trying to go out the window, but Santa comes in and then he starts strangling her with the shower curtain. But then 
Frank wasn't really dead yet, so he shoots through the wall at the Santa, but he misses. Santa goes back and finishes him off. The nude model goes to the window and falls out the window to, like, a very bad green screen fall. And then she starts running away, but Santa's still chasing her. She tries to get help from the other apartments, but nobody's home. So she just runs out of the motel area and then towards a Christmas tree lot. She gets to, like, the little office spot, I guess, of the christmas tree lot and then she hears the wood chipper turn on and instead of continuing to run away she goes towards the sound of the wood chipper and she gets her leg cut off by the santa and then he picks her up and puts her in the wood chipper feet first which is fucking terrifying like this is the only one of these six movies that i was like actually like that freaks me out like uh, <laughs> no first of all we've already established that i think foot pain is top tier worst pains and to be put in a wood chipper feet first no i think i'll pass then we're back at the cop shop and it's a small town double homicide squad that just got two separate phone calls for two new sets of murders so brenda gets both of these calls in essentially at once malcolm is going to go to the little girl's home because he's a friend of the family and aubrey is going to the motel because malcolm told her to and he's the boss. Giles is also going with Aubrey. I forgot to say this. He's like, I'm not really up to doing it. I feel sick because he's sick. And Malcolm gives him a man up speech. When Malcolm gets to the home, the mother says this about her daughter. He skewered her like a little pig. No, there is no way. <laughs> no, I don't believe that line comes out of a mother's mouth after that happens. There's fucking no way. She also makes this correct comment about the movie. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Then at the same time, Deputy Giles and Deputy Aubrey are at the motel. They find the two bodies in the motel room and they're searching for clues. They find like a business card for Mr. Snow, which is their coke dealer. They find a video camera that I forgot to mention was left on by Goldie when she went to go open the door. She just put it on the table and left it recording so they have that evidence. Malcolm laments over the fact that the town has turned into such like a sleaze place with pornography and drugs. Aubrey's like well it's because the mill closed and everybody doesn't have a job so that's what you gotta do to survive. Malcolm's like you call this surviving. I mean they keep you in business dickhead. Then Tiffany is caroling with the other sexy Santas. When they're finished with their song the priest comes up and is creepy of course and takes pictures of their boobs for later. And then Tiffany's boyfriend picks her up from that location. Back at the cop shop Malcolm makes the great decision to not call in for backup because they wouldn't be here till midnight even if they cared at all. It's good work. It's good copping. He also says like we're not gonna tell the mayor about it because you don't present your superiors with problems you present them with solutions. They watch the camera they get from the motel and Santa does a jump scare I guess and Aubrey radios in to Giles to tell him if there's a six foot Santa arrest him and he's like okay I'm gonna need help. The priest is about to walk into the church but before he does he takes money from a basket that he was like asking for charity for the church whatever and he steals it because he's a bad guy. He then goes inside and begins his sermon to a crowd of one old lady and in the middle of his sermon of insanity essentially uh, the Santa walks in and sits down. So he starts off and goes on this insane rant of like how Christmas is ugly as well because like sin. He gets to the pew right in front of the Santa and like slams his hands down and grabs them and then Santa cuts his fingers off and then stabs him a bunch. After he's done with that the old lady is like I ain't seen shit I won't tell and Santa walks up to her and gives her the literal blood money. <laughs> that he picked off the, the priest. So Aubrey goes to Jack's bar and it's just got a bunch of Santas in it and there's one particular Santa that seems pretty big in the back so she asks the bartender about him. His name's like Stein Carson, he used to work for the mill, lives in the motel now I guess. She calls it in at the station and convinces Malcolm that this is their best bet so he's like I'm coming don't do anything stupid. So she goes over and talks with Stein and is asking him a bunch of questions. He's just basically like not giving her a lot. She asks if he knows who Mr. Snow is and he's like no and then he tells her this urban legend of a man who went on a holiday murderous rampage because his wife had cheated on him and they were getting a divorce so then he dressed up as Santa and made all these makeshift weapons and ended up 
burning her to death and legend has it that he goes every year on Christmas to a different little town to kill a bunch of naughty people. So Aubrey uses this time to call the phone number that was on the card in the motel that says Mr. Snow on it and it's his cell phone because of course it is because he's Mr. Snow, he's the coke dealer. He freaks out and is like, who told you it was me? And runs out of the building through the back alley and she chases him. He punches her in the face and is uh, going to stab her and stabs her in the hand actually. And that's when Malcolm shows up. So she doesn't die, but he does get away. She gets in her cop car and calls her dad and is like crying like, I am not cut out for this job. Like, it's too tough. I choked. And he's all like, trust your gut and you'll be fine. It wouldn't be the first time a Bradmore has had to put down a bad Santa. So he basically gives her like a pep talk and she goes on to continue to not quit her job. Back at the cop talk, Malcolm and Aubrey are talking about who they think the killer is. She's not super convinced it's Stein, but he is super convinced it's Stein. Most of my notes on this conversation are just on the fact that Malcolm says shit like this. Don't put avocado on the burger. Go again, now you're piling hummus on top of the burger too. So he's making millennial burger jokes because they're the, the peak of hilarity. So funny. There's also a part where Malcolm says, Christmas madness is good enough motive for me. And it's just kind of like you're sitting there watching these cops who have only one piece of evidence, like the fact that they had his card, but there was also coke like in the motel. So you have like no evidence <laughs> against him for the murders, that is. You could arrest him for being the coke dealer. It just seems like Malcolm just kind of wants to be like, well, we found our guy. We don't have to worry about this anymore. So then she's sitting in her car and there's a knock on the window and she rolls down and the guy there is Joe. It's her ex-husband, I think. So it's pretty much like they were acting like Joe was dead, but he's not dead. He's just a Christmas Santa now. And he asks about like blah, blah, blah murders. And she's like, I don't know anything about that. He's like, yeah, I didn't believe it either. And then that's it. That's the scene. <laughs> Aubrey and Malcolm are staking out looking for Stein to arrest. During the stakeout, Aubrey decides to do some police work and look at corresponding dates of unsolved murders during Christmas time and Jim's logs of where he's been. I don't remember if I mentioned this, but when she was talking with Jim when he was upsetting the kids, he had given her his log book to prove like he had a permit to be there and it showed that he moved around a lot and so she was checking that against the unsolved murder reports in different towns. So she finds one situation where he was in a town where there were like four unsolved murders. So she calls into Malcolm and is like, oh, it's Jim, it's not this guy. We gotta go get Jim. So they get to his mobile home, they announce themselves and they go in and he's not there. The next scene has us catching up with what the mayor's up to. It's nighttime now and he's having his Christmas party. He has two daughters apparently and one of them is just like a little old girl and she catches him smoking and is like, you're supposed to quit smoking. He's like, oh, I will, New Year's resolution. Okay, bye, good night, go to bed. I'll be in in a minute. He's also like, I'm glad one of my daughters is still sweet. The little girl goes inside and Tiffany and her boyfriend around the corner and um, she's all like, I'm gonna show my boyfriend the new guest house. And he's all like, we'll make it quick. You know, things dad say. The mayor then receives a phone call from Malcolm and he's talking on the phone when the Santa killer shows up and kills him with a string of Christmas lights, which is a nod to the first movie. But here's the problem I have with this scene. This fucking mayor is on a phone like this. He is strangled like this, so his hand is in the perfect spot to stop yourself from being strangled, but instead, like, the actor just slowly slips his hand down. This is fucking dumb as hell. Dumb as hell. So he dies while Malcolm's still on the phone with him and Malcolm just thinks it's, like, a bad connection. We then cut to Tiffany and her boyfriend. They're fooling around. She leaves the room to take off her Santa dress to show that she's wearing Santa underwear. And when she goes back in the room, her boyfriend's not in the room and she's like, where are you? And the bathroom door opens a little bit and then then boyfriend jumps out of the closet and scares her and she's like you asshole what the hell and then she realizes how did you get from the bathroom to over there without me noticing because the bathroom's here the closet's over here and he's like what do you mean and she's like how did you do that the bathroom door just opened on itself this isn't funny and then he goes into the bathroom but from where the bathroom door was just opened a little bit it's now opened all the way and he goes into the bathroom and then the Santa's behind the door and he shuts him in and then knocks the handle off so the boyfriend can't get in the bedroom. So she obviously starts screaming, but they wanted to do it in slow motion. I have no idea what happened here, but I'm guessing when they did it to slow motion because it lowers the 
voice pitch and thinking they wanted to fix that instead of making her sound like she had a really deep scream to this kind of fucking monstrosity scream. Why was that a choice? So she tries to run away and the Santa throws an axe that only like cuts her Achilles heel, which ouch, that would suck. Then he picks her up and mounts her to an antler skull thing. Like in the first movie, it was an entire deer head mount, but in this one, it's just the antlers. So obviously nod to the first movie with that. And then the boyfriend just gets like an ax to the head, like his head splits in half and that's how he dies. Then there's this completely unnatural weird scene where the mayor's youngest daughter is just standing in the middle of the room with the Christmas tree, doesn't acknowledge that Santa's walking towards her, but he walks towards her and he just silently hands her a candy cane that's covered in blood and then walks away and it looks so unnatural and weird and forced and like, not that, you know, a lot of things in this movie are realistic, but that scene just looked like, ugh, what the fuck is this? It was bad. Then when he walks away, she finally says something and she's like, Santa, you forgot your cookies. So then it's the Santa parade and the cops are there looking for Jim and Aubrey spots him in the crowd. So she starts chasing him. She loses him in the crowd of like 50 other Santas, but it's a good thing her dad is King Santa and he has the high ground so he just points to where Jim was running towards and she runs and chases him again and Malcolm cuts him off at the pass and like knocks him over so it counts as his catch I guess because he's all like I told you I'd get him. So they bring him in and they lock him up and Malcolm says that you know we're locking you up because there were four people dead in that one town you were at some other Christmas and now there's six people dead tonight which is for the record they should only have five confirmed kills right now not six. They don't know for sure that the topless nude model is dead because I don't remember when but sometime after this Malcolm says like go look for the third woman in the video I don't remember her name so yeah so I guess they're just assuming instead of trying to find somebody who could I mean she is dead but they don't know if she's just injured and could be saved but they just don't really seem to be all that worried Jim has a meltdown and has this long rant about how holidays suck and where's his nice things and how come everybody else gets nice things and fuck this and fuck that, fuck the holidays. So Aubrey goes back to the motel and sees Stein going to his motel room and she follows him and also opens his door and doesn't announce that she's there. She's like freeze and whatever and he's like you don't have it in you and pulls a gun on her and before he shoots her she shoots him first and kills him. After she kills him there's these fuzzy shots and it's like maybe she's like freaking out because she just killed a guy and then she sees a snowflake and she's like oh the crossword puzzle thing is snowflake and she like smiles. She figured out her crossword puzzle. She only had to kill a man to do it. And then she notices the present that is in his house, that present that's been showing up in multiple different locations that she's been in the day. And by multiple different locations, I mean like her dad got one and then there was one at the motel with the dead people. And I think that's it. So she leaves. Deputy Giles' shift is over. So he's like, bye. Malcolm. So he leaves work and before he leaves work, Malcolm tells him to take out the trash and then we get this homage to part two. Garbage day. Garbage day! There's a car outside and it's playing metal really loud so he goes up to it, knocks on the window, the window rolls down, nobody's in the car but then he gets stabbed in the eye by something and he's dead. I'm not quite sure why he dies outside of like making that extremely disgusting comment like maybe they really should have checked his background. We're gonna try to act like any of these murders make sense. Murder seldom does. Oh you're right thanks Malcolm. So Aubrey calls Malcolm and is like blah 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 the presents they're probably like markers for who they're gonna kill next. I'm going home to my dad to make sure my parents are safe and Malcolm's like probably don't worry about it. Then San is at the police station and he has a flamethrower and he kills Malcolm McDowell with it. Oh big mistake bringing a flamethrower to a gunfight. So Aubrey makes it home and finds that her dad has been disemboweled, which is a bummer. And then her mom is alive upstairs, like trapped in the closet. And she's like, I'm gonna go get him. And her mom's like, it's not safe. But she says, fuck safety. I'm gonna go get him anyways. Back at the cop shop, Brenda is running away from the Santa and locks herself in like I don't know, a torture closet, I guess, and is trying to stay quiet the best she can. And I don't understand why the Santa is chasing her. She wasn't shown to have done anything bad. Like, why does that make sense? Told you before, murder seldom does. God damn it, Malcolm. The Santa almost gets, the Santa almost gets Brenda, but then the sprinklers go off. 
super late because they should have already gone off when he did the flamethrower, but okay. Jim screams about the water, so the Santa goes towards Jim because that's super distracting. You can't have somebody screaming about water when you're trying to murder a woman for no reason. Santa actually lets Jim out of the jail cell and is gonna let him leave, but then Jim mouths off to him like, what's your badge number so I know who to file in the complaint? Oh, you're deaf and dumb because you don't answer me and blah, blah, blah. Santa like shoves Jim back towards the cell and then Jim punches him. So then we have a Santa fight. Eventually Santa gets the best of Jim and uh, kills him with brass knuckles to the face. Aubrey eventually makes it back to the cop shop and she has a shotgun and she's making her moves through the shop. I forgot to mention that all of the lights are off. I don't remember exactly why the lights are off, but the lights are off and only the emergency lights are on and the emergency lights are either red or green. This part of the movie gets really visually confusing for me because of the aforementioned camera never stops fucking moving. So during the Santa fight, it was kind of hard to see because the two colors in the shots are red and black. Aubrey finds the bodies of Malcolm and Jim and then she hears Brenda screaming. So she's going towards Brenda. As she's on her way to Brenda, the Santa like grabs the gun from a corner and lifts it up and she shoots the ceiling and then they, she loses the shot shotgun because he like starts wall choking her with it I believe. She takes out her like billy club or whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called. Baton I guess and like hits the Santa and she's like my dad was a good man and then he lets her go and she runs away and then she has her pistol out. Somehow the Santa surprises her again. She loses her pistol and they are fighting again. She pepper sprays him in the face and she goes and gets the emergency axe and then they have an axe fight but she loses this axe fight and gets kicked through a pane of glass Ass, which I, could be a nod to part two also. So anyways, when she lands, she sees that the flamethrower is next to her. For whatever reason, the Santa took off the flamethrower. So she gets it and just in time for the sprinklers to shut off because she lights him on fire. That's it, she lights him on fire. Then she goes to save Brenda and she saves Brenda and the sprinklers are back on again. Brenda and Aubrey leave the police station and the whole thing's on fire now. And then just when you're ready for the credits, the movie keeps fucking going. It turns out the Santa killer actually got away and now he just has burns on his face. Then we get like a flashback of the urban legend Santa killer that Stein told Aubrey in the bar about. And we're also shown that there's a little boy in a truck across the street. And that is the little boy of the cheating mom and the murdering Santa. An officer shows up and he's like, put the flamethrower down and don't make me do it, Ronald. And then Ronald makes him do it and he shoots him. The flamethrower falls and a gas explosion happens and lights the Santa on fire. Um, and then it's revealed that the cop who shot that Santa was Aubrey's dad. Oh boy, was that some 2010s type of fucking movie. So I thought this one was annoying, which is a weird description to give up to movies. You have annoyed me. First of all, like the music to it was kind of over the top at times. Like when they were doing the Christmas music, it was like intensely Christmas music and pretty loud. And it was like, all right, we get the point. It's Christmas. You're making a wholesome holiday really unwholesome. I get it. I thought the jokes were really lame, but that's probably just because, you know, some things don't age well. It's almost like we grow up or something. Silent Night of 2012, the last one on the list. So I didn't care about this movie. I didn't hate this movie, so it's obviously going to beat the third one. So I also didn't care too much for the fourth one either. So now I kind of have to think to myself, like, which one do I like least? The thing I'm taking into consideration is would I put other people through watching this movie with me on like a terrible movie night? And the answer, if I had to pick either Silent Night or Silent Night for initiation, it would be Silent Night. So let's put her up there. Boom, right, right there, yeah. Right there, okay. Now let's talk about the trailer. The movie itself has 11 kills in it and the trailer has three of those kills. Well, no, I'm sorry. The movie has 12 kills, 13. The movie has 12 or 13 kills and the trailer only has three of them. So since we're doing too much in the trailer, slasher version, is there too many kills in the trailer? The answer is no. Also, I don't think it gives away 
I also don't think it gives away the story either. I think that just gives you enough basic, there's an evil Santa killing people. So guys, we did it. We're done. This is, this is it. This is my list and my trailer opinions. And we have made it through the entirety, as of right now, 2020, December 2020, the entirety of the Silent Night, Deadly Night series, franchise, movies. Um, cool. Thanks for watching this video, and if you've stuck all the way through all six of these videos that I've done on all six of these films, thanks for joining me on the journey of the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my ranking list. If you liked the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you liked it a lot, share it with somebody who you think might like this kind of series thing. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do so. Thank you to all of my subscribers that let me do this thing for an audience. Very fun. I'm gonna stop rambling now and I'll see you guys in the next videos. Bye! I fucked up. Okay, I fucked up, sir. I have to live with that for the rest of my life. That's great. Good job. For your life. <laughs>